Psalm 46 tells us, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help when the morning dawns. Our order of worship is a little different today. Um, I hope everybody was able to get a copy of the order of worship. And it's different because this is a different time. Typically on Communion Sunday, I wear this stole. Today, I'm wearing it for Communion Sunday, but also because White in the church is the color for weddings, for high celebrations like Easter and Christmas, and for funerals. And it seemed appropriate to me today to honor the grief around us with the color white that we might be reminded, even just with the color of the pain in our midst. I contacted our friends, Stan and Kim, in Cuba, and asked them to, if they could bring a message for us today, and they were able to do that. So I'm going to play that message from them now. Hey there, Ecclesia family. This is Stan, and Kim is here with me, and we're just... Uh, thinking so much about you, you're in our hearts, that we see all the pictures and hear all the testimonies, and we're so blessed to be part of your family and to see what you're doing to help serve the community, and I can't help think about the old hymn, Love Lifted Me, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I, and you're part of that love that has lifted people up, so know that we're lifting you all up in our prayers, and our hearts are with you, and we'll be there sometime in November, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of work to do then, but thank you for what you're doing and anything we can do from here. All your Cuban family is praying hard for you. Hey there, we love you so much, and uh, we just, our hearts are stretching out, as, as I know your hearts are always stretching out towards us. And I think of Psalm 46, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time. Technology is so good when it's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I can't help. So. Hey there. As, as I know, your hearts are always stretching out towards <laughs> us. And I think of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength a very present help in times of trouble, so we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains fall into the hearts of the sea, though the seas rage and, t tr and the mountains tremble with its tumult. So we do not need to be afraid. Certainly there's work to do, and you all are exemplary on how you live out the concrete actions of love to those in need. And so we just know that God is smiling on that work and enabling you to continue that work and giving you the strength and grace to, to do what needs to be done. And make sure you save some energy and time to take care of yourselves because God smiles upon that too. We love you very much. We are heartbroken at the suffering that's going on. And we praise God for being right there, holding all of you. 
so safe and secure in the loving in, in God's own loving arms. Big hugs from here, and we look forward to seeing you in November. And we'll be in touch between now and then. Love you. Bye. And now we speak into our presence, those who are not with us today. We have a number of people who are out due to the hurricane. Um, we have been in touch with all of our members. Uh, if you're wondering about somebody from our, from our community at Ecclesia Baptist, we can let you know. Um, we did have some people in Ecclesia whose home was severely damaged. Adam Demange and his daughter Gabby and their friend Jeff who lives with them. Their roads were washed out. Their driveway is washed out. The only way for them to get in and out is to hike up a mountain in the mud. Desperate situation and I assured them that Ecclesia was here to help them in any way they needed. Uh, Karen said she could be here today because uh, she was staying with her son and his wife and daughter, and they don't have, I think they don't have water. They have electricity, but they don't have water. And she sends her love to all of you. Caitlin and Caitlin were here on Friday helping us with the uh, supply distribution. Today, they are helping parents who are in flood waters, um, theoretically, I mean, not, fig not literally, figuratively. So um, most of our folks have been impacted by this in some way, but we're grateful. Uh, Chris, Chris Dotson, his house was severely damaged. Their neighborhood was severely damaged. And he said that he didn't think that they could get here today. He has said that they are, I believe they're still without power and water. So, um, and spotty cell signal too. They are, they don't have a cell signal now either, right? Yeah. So, um, but, but I have contacted every person or laid eyes on them. Uh, we had to hunt down Cliff, but we found him. I had to hunt down Karen this week, but I found her. So our people are all doing fine, as fine as anyone could be. So we're going to speak all of them into our presence today and begin our worship together. Josh. Today's psalm reading is from Psalm 69. 1 through 3 and 13 through 18. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I am weary. With my crying, my throat is parched. My eyes grow dim with waiting for my God. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. With your faithful help, rescue me from sinking in the mire let me de be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Do not let the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free because of my enemies.
Now hear the word of the Lord from Psalm 13. It says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, for I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love, and so my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. This is the word of the Lord. And now we are to pray together the litany prayer. If you are um, so inclined, it is printed order of worship. And I will read the plain print, and Jordan will lead you in reading the Bible. We don't just read these words, though. We pray these words. So let us go to God now in prayer. Loving God, we pray for all those whose lives have been disrupted and devastated by Hurricane Helene. You are an ever-present help in times of trouble. We mourn for what has been lost. Homes. Businesses. Possessions. Lives. Hope. For those whose homes have been destroyed. Shelter them. For those whose possessions have been lost. Provide for them. For those whose means of making a living has been disrupted. Sustain them. For those who have lost loved ones in the chaos. Comfort them. We pray for volunteers here to help. Give them strength. We thank you for their presence here. We are grateful. We pray for those working to restore our electricity. Keep them safe from danger. As they persevere through hazardous conditions. Make us grateful for their sacrifice. We pray for those working to rebuild Western North Carolina's infrastructure. Lead them through this disaster. To answers to the complex and far-reaching problems in our community. Give them patience. We pray for state and government officials. Give them wisdom. That they may see problems and envision solutions. To care for the people. We pray for people as they work to rebuild their lives. Give them hope and perseverance. Help us to be kind. Let us not grow weary in doing good. Show us how to love one another. And may we remember that we are held in your steadfast love forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us go to God and lift the names of those, the names of people and concerns that are weighing heavy on our minds. Let us go to God in prayer, asking, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kara. David Carboneau. J. Rod. Jeffrey Dooling. Karen West and Karen Stevens. Jermaine Weaver. Lord, in your mercy. And now let us pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we continue our worship with the beloved hymn, Blessed Assurance. Please stand as we sing. Page 11 in your hymn book. Our scripture reading comes today from Psalm 22. Hear the word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God. I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In, in you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. 
but I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you, it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you, I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near. And there's no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It's melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers circles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing, they cast lots. This is the word of the Lord.
Sage, we've missed you and we welcome you back into our fellowship. Um, Sage offered to sing that song because it was one that they'd sung before and um, realized the importance for that message for us today. So Sage, thank you again for your gifts and for sharing those with us. We are, we are better for it. So now it's my turn. <laughs> what is there to say? How many times have you heard this week, there are no words. There just aren't words. That's one of the reasons, by the way, that music is so important. Because when words fail, music holds us together. The familiar hymns we have already sung today strengthen us, don't they? The, the, the idea that this is our story, that this is our song, is not just true for those in this room and those online. It's true for those who were in the storm in 1916. It's true for all of those who came before and for those who will come after. This is our story. Can it also be our song? It is the worst of times. It's also the best of times. From now, for the rest of our lives, we will have our Helene story. You'll know what you were doing when you heard the news, where you were. You'll remember that you said, no way, hurricanes don't happen here. They're overreacting. You'll remember that your neighbor said, you're overpreparing. It's not a big deal. And you'll remember that one who always gets nervous about every little thing that there just won't be any living with her now because God help us, she was right. We'll talk about how we prepared or how we didn't. We'll say how long our power was out and what we were doing when it came back on. We'll talk about how we manage that time with our devices and our, our batteries and how we used our cars to charge things that we didn't even know we could charge. We'll say we wish that we had a transistor radio. Amen? We'll go, we'll say, yeah, and then we went shopping for one and we couldn't find one anywhere. We'll say things like, the worst of thing about it was the water. We'll talk about how we picked up a Home Depot bucket and made a dry toilet out of it and did things we never thought we would do. We'll talk about how we bathed, how we got clean, how we shared our space with others. And we'll say things like, 
I never dreamed we would have no cell service. I never dreamed I wouldn't be able to get in touch with people. I can always get in touch with people. There are a thousand ways to get in touch with people, and I can't get in touch with people, and it's been days. And I don't know how my son is, my mother, my uncle, my friend. And some of us will say, I had a 256-day streak on Wordle, and I lost it because of Helene. I have missed Wordle, gotten it wrong, three times in three years. And one of them was this week. We'll never forget the life we lived in the last 10 days. We'll never forget the horrible sights we've seen, the stories we've heard. And all of those stories will become part of our story. And we'll tell it and we'll retell it. And as you do, there are going to be somebody in your audience, I promise you, who's going to say something like, well, God has divine plans, you know. Or God's ways are not our ways. When anybody says that, I want to say, stop picking on God. What makes you think God wanted this for us? What Bible are you reading? And then somebody, somebody's going to say that thing that always gets on my very last nerve and causes me to stand on my soapbox and say, questioning God is too okay. Not only is questioning God okay, questioning God is godly. Questioning God is biblical. I read to you today part of Psalm 22, and the psalmist rages at God. He's furious, and he doesn't hold back words. He goes, look, the, our, our um, text has cleaned it up a little bit. It says, I'm a worm. The, real, the Hebrew word is, I'm a maggot. I'm out here just a maggot. And he tells God, I don't like this. Do something. Fix it. Have you ever gotten mad at God, but you didn't want to mention it because you were afraid God might overhear? Anybody? Yeah, like, I don't want to tell anybody, but I'm kind of mad at God. And God's going, I'm right here in the same room. I, I hear you. <laughs> But we turn away from God thinking we'll find the answers to being mad at God somewhere else. And if we can learn anything from the Psalms, we can learn that the psalmist turned towards God with their anger. The psalmist take all that they feel and they throw it back at God. Have you seen the movie The Apostle? Who stars in that? Cindy, do you remember? Uh, anybody? It's a very famous person. One of us will think of it in a minute. But in that, yes, Robert Duvall. In this movie, he's, he gets mad at God, and, and somebody's walking down the road past the house, and they hear him just screaming. And they go in and ask his mother, what, is he okay? And she said, oh, yeah, he's just praying. And I love that. Because God can handle us in any state we find ourselves. Maybe you haven't gotten mad at God before, and I'd just say, hold on. Or maybe I'd say, pay closer attention. Because there are infuriating things in our world. Maybe you got mad because you lost a job or didn't get a promotion. Maybe you got mad because your relationship fell apart or you lost a loved one. Or maybe life dealt you a blow that just was not fair. Maybe you lived in Kansas and your house was wiped out by a tidal wave. 
Or maybe you lived in Florida and you were swamped by a blizzard. Or maybe you live in the mountains of Western North Carolina and your whole community was washed over by a hurricane that has no business in the mountains. I scooted away to North Myrtle Beach to escape a hurricane. Our friends in Houston called and said, y'all want to come here to escape a hurricane? It doesn't make sense. And so people start trying to make sense of it. And they blame everybody and everything. People are getting impatient. People are going to get ugly. It's going to happen if it hasn't already. It doesn't make sense, this situation in which we find ourselves. And I, I encourage me and you and all of us that when you're looking at something that doesn't make sense, instead of saying, boy, this just doesn't make sense, maybe work on understanding it better. When you get your signal back and you're able to look it up, you're going to see that mountains were not made to survive hurricanes. They cause things like mudslides. They don't cause mudslides in, at the beach. But here, <coughs> there are things that happen because of the way it, it just is here. But I know people want to blame somebody. And if that makes you feel better, knock yourself out. Don't post it on social media because everybody heard enough of that. And it's not like somebody's going to say, you know, I feel so much better because of that post I saw on Facebook. Stop doing that. It's not nice. If the psalmist who wrote Psalm 22 were living in 21st century Asheville, I guarantee you he would be questioning God. And God would welcome those questions. Just as God welcomes yours, just as God welcomed this very same psalm uttered by his son Jesus Christ on the cross, Jesus God's own self said, my God, oh, my God, why have you forsaken me? When you question God in difficult times, you look like Jesus. But just don't stop there. See, like Jesus, the psalmist does not remain in despair. Let's read on, beginning in verse 19. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I, I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or dis abhor the affliction of the afflicted. Get that. He did not despise the affliction. In other words, oh well. No, because God pays attention. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will repay, I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord. 
and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will not just be told about Helene, but about the Lord and proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that God has done it. See, in the midst of his darkest time, the psalmist managed to see some light. In the midst of his fury, he got a little glimpse of hope, of who he was made to be. In the midst of it all, he saw a little bit of light. And if we know anything about God, we know that God is light. One of my favorite books in the Bible is a little bitty short one. That's not why it's my favorite although it doesn't hurt, um, is 1 John. And to get to 1 John, just start at the back of your Bible and then turn pages back. You'll get there. 1 John 1 says this. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. And then there's this. This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Hear those words again. This is the message we have heard from the beginning and proclaim to you that God is light. And in God, there is no darkness at all. This is a dark time for our community, but there is always, always light. There is always light. You've seen it, right? Have you seen moments of light? Take a minute and let those lights filter into your heart and soul. You've seen neighbors who had never met having dinner on the deck, a dinner of something like taquitos and uh, french fries and a steak because we're just cooking up what's there and laughing about it all the while. You've seen people who were complete strangers reach across a tree, cut it down together, cut it out of the road, and move it away. Now they're friends, but they didn't know each other before. You've heard people asking constantly, how can I help? How can I help? You've heard from people you haven't heard from in years saying, I care about you. You matter to me. How can I help? There's light all around, but we don't have to see it. We really don't. God is not going to pull open your eyes and shine a flashlight into your eyes. That would hurt, and God, that's not who God is. And so God invites us to see the light, and then as we see the light, we get to reflect it, and we become a part of the light. And through this very dark time, that's, we've got a long way to go. This is Sunday one. I mean, it's Sunday two, but it's Sunday one since we've been back. It's a long way ahead. So that means we're going to see a lot of light along the way, and we will have a lot of opportunities to reflect the light. That is what we're called to do in dark times, not to close ourselves up and, and be angry in a closet. 
but to pray to God, to cry out to God, and to let God bring hope and joy and light into our spirits so that we can then share that with others. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the light of your son, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for showing us the way to serve you in these difficult days that we might be shining lights for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We come now to our time for Holy Communion. And today is World Communion Sunday. Those of you who have been a part of Ecclesia for a long time know that I love World Communion Sunday. I like to have like different um, languages and all of that. And um, Jordan greeted me this morning with, uh, yay, it's World Communion Sunday. And I went, true, true story. Um, but uh, yeah, what a great day to have World Communion Sunday. The way we partake of communion here is Litzy will serve the, well, no, you're not serving. Jordan will serve the bread, I will serve the cup, and you will take a piece of bread and dip it into the cup and then return to your seat. Let us now enter into the worship of Holy Communion. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he gave things, and then broke it again and gave it to his disciples, saying, Esto es mi cuerpo, que por ustedes es partido. Hagan esto en memoria de mí. After supper, Jesús tomó la copa y les dijo a sus discípulos, Esta copa es la nueva alianza en mi sangre. This is the new covenant in my blood, the new covenant that is shed for forgiveness and joy. Drink it, all of you, in memory of me. Bendice, Señor, nuestro pan. Bless, O God, this bread. Give bread to those who are hungry. And hunger for justice for those who have bread. Bless, O God, this cup, and give it those who are thirsty. And thirst for justice to those who have something to drink. Receive these gifts of God, for you are the people of God. Receive these gifts of God, for you are the children of God. Receive these gifts of God, for God loves each other and all of you. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask your blessing upon the communion elements that we partake today. That as we serve these elements, we will feel the presence of your body within us that we will feel your very real presence entering into us and that we will feel loved and cherished in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
For the bread we have eaten, for the cup we have received, for, for the life we have been given, we give, give you, O oh God, our thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. You have heard the word of God. You've heard it read. You've heard it sung. You've seen it acted out. You've even taken the word of God into your own self. And now you are called to respond in whatever way you feel led as we sing one of the most beloved hymns of all time, Amazing Grace. Before we have our usual benediction, I want to read you a poem that Stan shared with me because I think it's a fitting prelude to our normal uh, benediction. This is a poem called To Be of Use and it's by Marge Piercy. The people I love best jump into work head first without dallying in the shadows and swim off with sure strokes almost out of sight. They seem to become natives of that element, the black, sleek heads of seals bouncing like half-submerged balls. I love people who harness themselves to an ox, to a heavy cart, who pull like water buffalo with massive patience, who strain in the mud and the muck to move things forward, 
who do what has to be done again and again. I want to be with people who submerge in the task, who go into the fields to harvest and work in a row and pass the bags along, who are not parlor generals and field deserters, but move in a common rhythm when the food must come in or the fire must be put out. The work of the world is as common as mud, botched, it smears the hands, crumbles to dust, but the thing worth doing well done has a shape that satisfies, clean and evident. Greek amphoras for wine or oil, hoppy vases that held corn are put in museums, but you know, you know, they were made to be used. The pitcher cries for water to carry and a person for work that is real. You have all given what you have to give to this task. I remind you that we don't all have the same yes. My yes might be different from yours and there is no guilt in that. My no might be your yes. Whether you play music, play with children, guide people who are struggling to get back to their homes or actually dig in the mud. Your yes is your yes. There is no guilt. There's only community. There's only one story. And part of that story is that you are loved and there is nothing you can do about it. Thanks for worshiping with Ecclesia. We'll see you next week. Jay